Yeah, our, our biggest focus right now as a team is trying to be as, as present and uh, locked in on today as we can possibly be. Obviously, if today to prepare for Kansas and then big game tomorrow night, uh, it's a heck of an opportunity. We just played them exactly two weeks ago, so there's a, there's a lot of things to take from that game um, and that we can apply and do a little bit better. We just uh, really uh, have talked a lot as a team about finding the the areas where we can be two points better in this possession, uh, you know, three points better in this four-minute segment, and obviously those things add up to determine the outcome of the game. But really excited about about just continuing to help our guys learn what actually being in the moment and focusing on today, and obviously our our next game is really all about. Questions, please. How much of that focusing on the moment is? Almost a direct result of, of the Georgia game, where I mean, think you guys defensively, yeah, you weren't focusing on the moment too much. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, obviously, the, the the last game is always the one that's the most powerful in your mind, and uh, you know, for us, uh, really, ever since I've been here, ever since I've been a coach, I mean, the defensive end has been the one that uh, you know we've always emphasized is when you control the most. Um, you don't completely control it, but you, you have, uh, with your effort, with your uh, connectivity, with your uh, willingness to adhere to your defensive principles, you have a really good opportunity to put a stamp on the game. And you know that game, the way that Georgia uh, was able to shoot the ball, the way that they were able to put the ball in the basket, um, defensively, that's not who we want to be. That's not who we can be if we want to win games. So that's been a huge uh, conversation point, you know, as a team, uh, individually with guys, obviously as a coaching staff. Uh, and and it's, a, it's a huge point of emphasis in practice. Uh, but I, I think we have to make sure we're careful not to, you know, focus on things that, that are outside of our control. Other teams, I think it's, it's about what can we do better. So yesterday, you know, the whole practice was about going back to the habits uh, that go into creating defensive stops. Uh, and that's what's going to make us better on Tuesday. So you think, you think Tuesday is just a program gut check moment? Big game, big opponent, good crowd, you know, and y'all need it back yeah, I think it's a it's a chance for our team uh, and uh, you know our program to demonstrate you know where we are and how we respond to you know a really really tough week last week. Um, you know, I thought the Oklahoma game was like that. You know, I, th I thought that was a game that um, you know we really had to come out and demonstrate a response. Uh, we tell our guys all the time, focus on the next most important thing. And uh, that's that's what this is right now. Actually, today's practice first uh, and and being the most locked in we can be to the the details that, that are going to go into creating a positive result on Tuesday. Uh, and then being in the moment for your teammates and for your for your team. Uh, having a hundred percent of you there, you know, uh, not 99, not 98, not 95, uh, because obviously in close games, those couple of percentage points make a difference. Does it help that you guys are going to be at home tomorrow or, you know, to kind of help them, you know, stay locked in? Yeah, I think it's always, it's always, if you can choose, always better to be at home, but uh, the same thing's going to winning at home or on the road. So, you know, it doesn't matter if the game's, um, at home or a thousand miles away, you you have to do the things on the defensive end, on the offensive end, that create the type of uh, results you want. So we're glad to be at home. We're excited, you know, to have our crowd behind us. Uh, we're excited it'll be a great atmosphere. Uh, but the key that that I've, you know, will continue to make our guys aware of is it's still about us grabbing hold of exactly what we need to do on a possession by possession basis. What would you say the confidence level of your team? Uh, I think that our guys understand 
that we can uh, be a really good team. I, our guys understand that we can beat anyone. Uh, they also know that there's been times where we haven't been that. And so uh, what we've tried to make crystal clear is um, here's why. You know, here, here's why we've been really good in, in, in these games or in these moments. Uh, here's why we haven't uh, in, in these other moments. And to me, you know, confidence comes out of first and foremost work, you know, putting work in. Uh, it, it, it comes out of having past experience where you've had success. Uh, and then it, it comes out of, I think from a team standpoint, uh, a, an understanding that there's an 1,000% commitment on your part and on the, on the part of the guys around you to the same thing. And every you know, big win I've ever been a part of, that's been a common denominator. Uh, so uh, in terms of where their confidence is, you know, yesterday in practice, uh, you know, those guys were locked in on one thing. And, and that's great. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, as it relates to the games, uh, it's about Tuesday at 6 o'clock. Are you worried it's fragile? Uh, I think that certainly circumstances, uh, you know, within the game and even between games, uh, certainly Im impacts guys. Uh, and we, you know, something that we, we try to front load uh, in terms of our communication about the fact that over the course of a season, there's going to be, uh, you know, different things that come up. There's going to be some twists and turns. It's the season individually is probably not going to go as smoothly as, as you planned out. Because, you know, every player plans out a, a 10 out of 10 uh, season. Um, so, yeah, I think we have to continue to, to get better at uh, helping our guys be their best regardless of circumstances. And before the season, you said that Matt Coleman would be somebody that would really fly off the screen. He's been struggling for a while. Uh, what are your conversations been like with him lately and how's his confidence? Yeah, he's actually he's had some terrific games, and then he's had some games, to your point, where he struggled. Um, we did a stat breakdown last week where I just I, I picked certain games where I knew he had played well, and I picked some other games where I knew he hadn't played well, and we, we compared it. And statistically, it's obviously a, a stark contrast. Um, you know, I, I think that Matt has been in, in games like Oklahoma, in games like our last Kansas game where, uh, you know, obviously we didn't win, uh, but we had an opportunity at the end to win. I think he's been really, really good. Uh, then he's had other games where he's really struggled. And uh, the challenge there is you're not going to play a 10 out of 10 game every single game. You're just not. I mean, that'd be great if he did. Uh, but then those other games, uh, you know, you need, you need him to be solid, particularly as a point guard and a leader. So uh, I've had conversations with him about confidence, uh, about, um, you know, making it about the guys around you. It's, it's challenging. You know, he's such a high character, good kid. Uh, sometimes, you know, you have to be careful not to take those guys for granted that they're like just rock solid personally so you don't have to focus on them. Uh, and so, you know, he's a sophomore. I think, you know, what I've learned a lot with, with sophomores uh, is that sometimes they think because they had a good freshman year because, uh, you know, they have some experience under their belt that it's going to be maybe a little bit easier than it is. Uh, and that's something that he's gone through this year. But uh, I believe he's a very, very high character person and player. Uh, and I think any time he gets in a situation where uh, he understands that his back's against the wall to some extent, uh, he usually responds really, really well. Uh, so what we've tried to do is make him feel that way all the time, but at the same time, you want, you want to build confidence, so that's the fine line. Uh, you know, the, la the last game, he got in that foul trouble early and, and just wasn't really able to get in the rhythm. He actually had, I think, 10 points in the first 10 minutes, uh, or eight points in the first eight minutes of the game. So offensively, he was playing really well, but, uh, you know, defensively was a, was a half step off on a couple of plays, got two fouls, and. Uh, that really affected him. We just we can't afford for him to get in foul trouble. You've spoken after games this season and last 
last season about how after losses and wins, there will be some healthy, I think you described it as healthy confrontation in the locker room. Is that confrontation that may be resulting from these previous stretch of losses, is it still healthy? In your opinion? Well, I think it's, it's always good as long as uh, guys are looking at, you know, what they can do better, you know, and, and having conversation about that. I think anytime, you know, something can be exposed or talked about, it's better than the opposite. Uh, or if it's talked about maybe, you know, behind, uh, you know, in, in just little groups. Uh, uh, I, to be honest, I, I, I want there to be even more of that, you know, from, from a player standpoint. Not, not, you know, fighting with each other, but, you know, honest conversation about, hey, this is what has to happen. This is what needs to be done different. Um, because obviously we do that as coaches, and that's, that's our job to expose that stuff. But I think anytime it's player driven or player led, it's more powerful. Uh, and, you know, Dylan has taken it upon himself to speak up a lot more in the last, really since our last Kansas game. Um, and I think that's been a, a good start, but obviously he can't do it alone. He needs uh, other guys with him. And then at the end of the day, talk is talk. You know, it's about going out there on the floor and. You know, in, in the case of defense, um, you know, doing the things that you have to do to get stops. What do you take away from the fact that y'all could have beaten Kansas on the road? Well, you know, it's uh, there's a lot of things basketball-wise you, you look at on, on the tape that, that we take and, um, you know, some things that, you know, really in these close games, you just want to you want to be an inch better on this possession, you know, a second earlier on that possession. Um, you know, you you want to attack a little bit more on that possession, a little bit smarter on that one. So, you combine all that stuff and uh, you know, taking that game and every game is in is its own entity. But the start of the first half and the start of the second half is really where they beat us because uh, I, I believe it was. 15 nothing. if you add those two together. We lost by two. Um, you know, they, they do a really good job playing with aggressiveness early in the game. Um, so that's one place to start, you know, just making sure that um, we make them earn everything they get. Vic hit a really tough three on their second basket up there. Uh, but, you know, just making them really earn every basket and then executing what we do, trying to get the ball in the paint as much as we can early. Um, just because I think that gives us a better chance to score. You're a little vulnerable there, unlike most Kansas teams. Well, they, you know, with Azubuki out there, you know, typically play four guards. Yeah. Most of the game they do. Um, and Marcus Garrett had a really good game against us last time, I believe a career high. Um, so he's a good player, and they, you know, they have really good perimeter guys. But, but yeah, they, they, you know, aren't as big as, as they would have been if Azubuki was playing. You mentioned Dylan kind of speaking on more since the Kansas game. I think he was vocal during the Georgia game as well. Do you get the sense that you've got enough guys that just hate losing, right? that just really want to just break out of this, this funk that they're in with these close losses? Well, I mean, you always want more guys like that. Um, I do think the one thing with Dylan that's maybe different than other guys is I, I think right now he sees the fact that this is my senior year and I don't know exactly where I'll be a year from now or six, from, six months from now, um, but I'm okay with that and I want to make this the best it can be. I don't want to uh, look back and have regrets about you know the last couple months of my season or, or however you know much time he has to play uh, and I think that's helped him play you know with an aggressiveness as as we all know Dylan's been at his best when he's aggressive uh, and he's he struggled when he's you know kind of tentative or as I tell him there's no half shots or half rebounds and I think he's done a better job with that and he's he's spoken up a lot more in front of the team uh, so now it's about how many guys he can bring with him. Uh, but to your point, you know, we, we definitely 
need more guys to have that same urgency and that same feeling. And as a coaching staff, you know, we are every day, you know, looking around and saying, okay, I like where this guy's at, you know, let's get him in more or, you know, this guy, you know, we got to tweak him. We got to, we got to get him in the right place. Uh, Cause at the end of the day, it's just having five guys, you know, on the floor, at, you know, at that, the end of that close game, you know, whoever it is we're playing that are connected around one thing. And then that gives us a chance, really good chance. How well are you sleeping these last couple of weeks? Uh, that's, uh, I, I would say the majority of coaches this time of year, <laughs> probably not great. But, you know, that's, Cedric, to be honest, that's kind of how it should be uh, this time of year. And, and when you're going through challenges, uh, I think part of the <laughs> opportunity as a coach is, is, you know, just when you go through tough times, trying to learn and figure some stuff out. And uh, every team is different. Um, like I said, this team certainly has shown how good it can be at times, but we've not shown that consistently. And so that's what you're up at night thinking about is how to create that. And, you know, Kirk brought up confidence. It's, it's that fine line of, um, you know, you want the guys to be confident. You want them to, to believe in, in being their best and what goes into that. Um, but they also have to know that, uh, you know, if the last game was here, that's not good enough. You know, we, you have to be here. Uh, and as a big boy, you got to own that. So, yeah, I, I, I'm thinking about that stuff all the time. Um, and it's one of those things that, you know, in the off season, uh, you, 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 you think about that stuff, but it's a whole different thing now when you're, when you're in the middle of it. And I'm just, I, I'm excited about just seeing what our guys can do uh, to respond because, you know, obviously we, we've taken some punches and, uh, but here we are, we got Kansas uh, on Tuesday at six o'clock. And, you know, there's a lot of teams in our league that go through twists and turns and ups and downs. And it's really, it's a team that, that responds best, that's going to have the best chance to win in that given moment. And then when the game gets done, uh, you got to regroup and, and try to figure it out again, win or lose. Uh, I think Courtney's making progress. Uh, he's just, he's such a, he's got so much potential and he's going to be really, really good in time. You know, he's just not quite ready to, to, to be what he will be. Uh, but, and it's unrealistic of me or uh, of us to uh, expect him to be, you know, what he'll be in a year or two. But, uh, you know, we need him. And the one thing you mentioned, Jackson, that those two have is they're not, they have no fear. You know, they attack and uh, they're aggressive. They make a lot of mistakes, uh, but they, they go at it and they, they want to win. They really, really want to win. Uh, I think with Courtney, part of the process for him has been learning the importance of details to winning. Uh, I told him the other day, I said, you were the best player in the state of Missouri. Um, you won two state championships. Um, and you played for a great high school coach, uh, but you, you kind of thought you could just do it your way, and you did. Uh, and that way was really good, you know, at that level. But now there's certain things you got to add and you got to make your way. You've got to update your way. And he's doing that. He's, his practice habits, the way he goes about things has come a long, long way. And I think that's been reflected in his play. Uh, we just got to help him get sturdier and uh, be able to weather the little moments in the game when things don't go his way. Um, but again, what I like about him is he's not afraid. You know, he, uh, at the five position, we have Jackson, we have Jericho and Royce, and then even sometimes we play Dylan there especially if you're playing against a team like Kansas where they, where they play four guards. Uh, so it's just figuring out which of our bigs have the most energy. Um, 
Royce is a guy that when he has gone in earlier in the year, I think there's been games where he's really helped us. Uh, so, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see him in there. Uh, he just got to just got to keep learning consistency every day in practice. He was terrific yesterday. I texted him after. I said, that's man, that's that's who we need every single day. Um, but he's overall making progress. It's just a matter of, you know, when we can get him out there and how much of an impact he can make, given the lineups and opponents and matchups and everything. Do you think your team was taken back by the intensity of Georgia and the sellout and you know, non-conference? Uh, well, we told them it was going to be a great crowd. Uh, they've had, I think they've had seven sellouts uh, all year. So, I mean, it's, they've done a good job with their atmosphere. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think one of the things that, that our guys uh, came to understand in the game and we hit them really hard with before the game is the one thing, you know, obviously the shooting uh, was double what they shot from three on the year. But the one thing they've done really, really well, even before our game, is, is cut and move. Um, and that was really what got them going before they made shots. I thought the way that they moved and, and attacked uh, on offense off the ball was really big. But uh, were the guys surprised? I, I don't think so. I mean, they've been on the road in our league enough times. And I thought when they, Georgia went on a barrage of, of shots, kind of mid-half, first half, our guys actually hung in there pretty well and fought. I mean, when we go into the halftime tied, it was like, hey, guys, <laughs> uh, this is a pretty good position to be in based on the way that they shot the ball for, for that stretch there. But now we have to make the miss. And obviously, we didn't do a good job of that. Three, four last ones. Uh, Shaka, before the season, you said this team was capable of taking a big step and it had high goals. Do you, does the team still believe that they're capable of taking that big step and the goals that y'all set before the season? Yeah, I think our team believes that they're capable of it. Uh, in fact, I know that. But, uh, you know, it's, it's closing the gap between believing and knowing that you're, what you're capable of and doing every day, every play, every second, uh, what you have to do to, to close that gap. And that's what we've done, you know, in games like North Carolina, Purdue, Oklahoma. Um, that's what we haven't done. Uh, in some of our recent losses, uh, and that's what we have to do on Tuesday night if we want to win. Do you like the challenge, the SEC challenge? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's good just from a scheduling standpoint. It gets you another, uh, another good game. It's you know, it's I. This is being here is the first league I've been a part of where you that's like in the middle of the season, uh, your conference season. So it is, um, you know, basically it's just like another conference game. But I think it's good from a scheduling standpoint because some of these leagues are going to 20 games instead of 18. So getting home and homes becomes harder. Uh, for instance, an ACC or a Big Ten team, I don't know how many home and homes a lot of those teams are scheduling just because uh, their schedule's filling up. Uh, so it just gets you another game. And then we'll also be playing one against a Big East team every year. So pretty much it makes your league schedule similar to 20.